I wanted to first cover a little bit about what is the landscape, what I feel, what we have been perceiving as accountants, as chartered accountants, as finance personnel, or what's been changing in you know the compliance landscape in India as a whole. So first, you know, from which came into my mind is data driven, and that's what I think kind of resonates with a lot of people here. A lot of the compliance exercise, your income tax returns, your case returns are just pure glorified data entry jobs. So at the end of the day, there is not much application of mining happening except that the fact that the government, the revenue authorities, everybody is just on data, data, and data. Volume driven, so if you were just generating invoices which were 100 a month, 200 a month, now has extended to 1000 invoices a month, 10,000 invoices a month. How do you handle that volume? With that answer, that obviously flows into having a robust system. By a robust system, I mean a robust accounting system. You are reporting not just for the tax purposes, you are reporting for your management purposes is also very important. I cannot stress this as much. Agar aap, aapka system itna robust rakhe, to aapki jo month end fire fighting hai, in any sort of exercise will subsequently reduce jo aapko time two days lagta hai by leveraging tools. And that then comes back into leveraging software tools. There are a lot of good API driven tools which are come. For example, I will just create uh, that subscribe with the utility which logs into the Interfax website using an API and takes two seconds to retrieve all pending notices. And they're going to extend this to GST and they're going to extend this to PDS. So if you have a branch in there, you have like 15 GST registration to constantly run it. Is my notice? Am I on top of things? Please utilize, leverage technology related tools. Explore cloud-based alternatives so that you know you are on top of things and you know when to allocate the right thing to the right person. It should not be a person or a people-driven process. It should be a system and an accounting system-based process. I would want to just leave you with that. Please make sure it's a system-driven process, not a person-driven process. People will change. There is attrition in accounting. Accountants come, accountants go, but the system should not change. That's, that's something I would just want to stress with. These are just the broad landscape to be able to all members uh, not just uh, in the IT industry, but even outside matters. But with all of you being visionaries in the IT industry, you would understand most of these factors much better than any other person. Now, briefly, I just wanted to cover what uh, a key change in income taxes, what small changes have happened in the GST law, some other law changes, something you should be aware about and a little bit if we have time and if we MC allows a little bit of questions and discussion. So uh, how many of you I, uh, are aware about this section which now tells you that you have to cut PDS card on benefits and purposes? Can I, can I get a yes or a no? I have very little yeses. I am writing a lot of notes so I will probably just wear it for a little bit. To detail, to detail this implications I would want to cover later, not keep you from enjoying your night. But primarily what the government now wants is that if you have any benefit or purpose in India, anything, you know, you've given a Diwali gift to let's say me and I hope you do that very soon. <laughs> if you've given a Diwali gift to me for an amount exceeding 20,000 rupees, you are technically now supposed to deduct PDS on it at 10%. Now, this is practical difficulty. If you have a gift, you can check the gift. 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 So, obviously, it just sucks the joy out of all the gifts, but that is the intent of the government. They want to track. Sir, I just, let me just cover this slide and cover it. Sir, I have to say this. I have to say this. I have to say this. That's why I called it an interactive session. So, uh, but there is a threshold. Agar aap, you know, you're sending just plain advertise to you know 20 of the, your closest clients. You don't have to obviously deduct PDS. As a ye ki aap ek advertise pehle lene aur bolne ke thara paane. The threshold limit is 20,000 per customer. And obviously, the payer should before releasing the consideration make sure that the PDS is already deducted. Ab iske bade far-reaching implications hai. For example, an event like this, right? 
where uh, I am holding an event for the benefit of all the members. Should I or should I not deduct PDS? What What would be your take on it? No. Because it's a legitimate event. Absolutely, sir. Can I get a little bit? Some more answer. Just it will encourage me in some sort of Sir, question is that benefits work with its pay TDS up to our year. Think about benefits far reaching. Benefit gave me the Apo in networking dinner to pull a guy from a very prestigious industry association. Hint, hint, we get it. Do you think Jopo is a benefit when a TDS card to Chile and a card to Chile? Very much the practically possible in here, and obviously the answer is correct. Other up conference hold for a regular sales, marketing, awareness related promotion. After a seminar, you don't have to deduct PDS because who cares? It's a marketing expense. It's a regular expense of information dissemination. There is no requirement for TDS there. But if you are taking people, your top sales performers to outside India, within India, for a for a sales trip, and I'm sure this is a very common activity. What do you think the implication is? Yes, you are supposed to deduct. If the benefit to that person is more than 20 pounds, so obviously air tickets, hotel, milake, the benefit is much more than that. So if you're taking your sales team, your top performers, and incentivizing them, which are you know, we go to a, we go to some country or you know, some some exotic destination, you will have to think twice before doing that. It must be tedious, cut that. So it is going to hit your working capital. So this is one, and uh, there are I. Highlighted certain situations on what we have to in terms of pure sales and cash discounts. So, our credit notes, debit notes, your incentive, <coughs> incentives there from your purchase from your vendors to your customers, etc. As long as they are uh, being adjusted from your sale and purchase, no need to deduct PDS. But if you're giving any other sort of benefit, for example, a gift uh, to your top customer. To your top, uh, you know, selling customers or any of your top selling distributor, then you have to think twice and deduct the TDS. Uh, practically very difficult, but uh, law is law. I just here to myself. Pande do me to jo pagwan ji law karte hain, usko reinvent karna hai. I can't say this. I can't say this. I can't say this. I can't say this. I can't say so uh, just this uh, small very uh, interesting implication is in case of social media influencers you have your Instagram channel, Facebook page and you see free gifts from let's say a company you showcase that on the on the on your page even those free gifts uh, will be liable for TDS reduction. Obviously, you can claim to TDS, but it's just a block of working capital. Same, I've covered conferences and exhibitions for everybody. So, I, I, I just end the uh, slide here for TDS or income tax changes. Some uh, small changes in GST. Uh, anybody who's going to has a turnover of more than 10 crores, please be aware. First of October, say you have e invoicing applicable. Align your systems, buy a good solution, uh, a good software solution, and needless to say, will ease out your life in terms of e-voicing. If you are billing anything to CSIR, DSIR, there was an earlier concession rate of 5% for Hartshika, so by any chance, any of the members here are billing to them. Uh, there's a little bit of change in the reverse charge mechanism for rent. So I'm sure you have heard of that the rent pay reverse charge mechanism has been uh, I don't well into it, I'll probably share this slide. It's a helpful DVD for everybody here. Is for refer karke. You can just be aware. What the government is trying to do is make sure everything, everything apart from breathing, comes into the GST net. But you can't be sure about breathing, so I mean that can also come at some point. Some small changes in the GST coding mechanism, and uh, I won't take much of the time, I want to keep it brief. Keep a little time for questions if someone has any or or uh, or discussions. So, so uh, what happens is, 
that's a very interesting question. I just see I can put the audience. First question is here. मैं TDS काट रहा हूँ क्या automatically TDS करने से उसकी income बनेगी what is the implication for the person जिसके लिए मैं काट रहा हूँ see I am an employee I got taken to a sales conference for you know for performing very well for your organization अब आपने मेरा TDS काट दिया you know आप मेरे को कोई direct benefit accrue नहीं हुआ the government what it saying is कि it does not matter whether that income जो आपने जिसमें TDS काटा है is taxable in the hands of the employee or not आप TDS काटो, वो बंदा रिफंड ले लेगा। It's just a mechanism of keeping track of the benefits done. That's the only thing that's happening. So, anyway, I think I'm finished. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope the session was productive for everybody. Thank you.